Hey, what's going on guys? Recently, Federal Reserve cut rates to stimulate another economic growth. Unemployment rate seems to be low as well, but other important indicators give us signals that economic expansions comes to the end. In this video, I will give you four historically proven indicators that signal recession. The report on the second quarter gross domestic producer showed that economy slows last spring. It also came exactly 10 years since the 2009 recession ended, making this officially the longest expansion in American history. So perhaps it's no surprise that forecasters, investors and ordinary people are increasingly asking when the next downturn will arrive. Economists often say that expansions do not die of old age. That is recession alike coin flipping contest. Just because you get heads 5 times in a row does not mean your next flip is more likely to get a tail. Still another recession will come eventually. Fortunately, economic expansion unlike coin flipping streak usually provides some hints above when they are nearing the end if you know what to look for. In this video I will give you a guide to some of the most important indicators that have historically done the best job of sounding the alarm. Economists are notoriously terrible at forecasting recessions, especially more than few months in advance, unless you are always bearish like Peter Chief, and 1 out of 10 times forecasting your recession will come to life. Historically, the best that forecasters have been able to do consistently is recognize that we are in the recession once we are in one. The dream of an early warning system is still dream that we are working on. Indicator number 1. The unemployment rate. Rapid increases even from the low level is a great indicator of recession. The unemployment rate is near 50 years low. But that isn't what matters for recession to come. What matters is the change. When the unemployment rate rises quickly, a recession is almost certainly on its way or has already arrived. Unemployment is considered to be a lagging indicator and is unlikely to be the first place to pick up on a signal of trouble. But what it lacks is timeline. It makes up for its reliability. The unemployment rate pretty much always spikes in the recession and it rarely rises much without one. Which is why right now the unemployment rate should be the source of comfort. Not only it is low, it's trending down. When that has been the case historically, there has been less than 1 in 10 chances of recession within one year. Indicator number 2. The yield curve. What to watch out for? Interest rates on 10-year treasury bond falling below the 3-month bond. It has already happened. The yield curve is less intuitive than unemployment rate, but it has historically been among one of the best predictors of recession. The fundamentals are straightforward. The curve essentially shows the difference between interest rates on the short-term and long-term government bonds. When the long-term interest rates fall below the short-term ones, the yield curve is said to have inverted. Think of the yield curve as a measure of how much confidence investors have in the economy. In normal times, they demand higher interest rates in return for tying up their money for the long period. When they got nervous, they are willing to accept lower rates in return for unreliable safety bond offer. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York has developed a handy metric that translates fluctuation in the yield curve into recession probabilities. Right now it puts the chance of the recession straightening the next year is 33%, up sharply from the year ago, and not far from where it was in 2000 dot com bubble and housing bubble of 2008. Indicator number 3. The ISM Manufacturing Index What to watch out for? The index falling below about 45 for an extended period of time. Every month, the Institution of Supply Management Survey purchasing managers at the major manufacturers about their companies' orders and inventories, hiring and other activities. 
It then aggregated those responses into an index. Line above 50 indicates that manufacturing sector is growing, below 50 it's contracting. The manufacturing index has some significant advantages. It is released early, often on the first day of the subsequent month, and unlike lots of economic data, it does not get revised. Most importantly, the index is true leading indicator. It has historically shown signals of trouble before the border economy hit the bottom. On the other hand, manufacturing no longer drives the American economy, which means that contraction in this sector does not guarantee a recession. The ISM index falls below 50 for several months in 2015 and 2016 for example, signaling an industrial recession that never turned into the real thing. But steep downturn in manufacturing trend to be signal of trouble, it is rare for index to fall much below 45 or so without the recession hitting. Indicator number 4. Consumer sentiment. What to watch out for? Decline of 15% or more over one year. Consumer drive the economy now more than ever. It is pretty much impossible for the economy to keep growing if Americans decide to keep their wallet closed and not spend any money. The trouble is, by the time spending slows, the recession is probably already underway. Measures of consumer confidence such as long-running index from the conference board provide insight into how consumers are willing to spend in the future. Confidence indexes are volatile from month to month, and they sometimes drop sharply as consumers react to stock market, political development, and other events. These declines often do not translate into the real change in spending. But sustained decline are another matter. Economists at Morgan Stanley recently found that 15% year-over-year drop in the conference's board index is a reliable predictor of a recession. By that metric, the economy isn't in trouble. Consumers' confidence is basically flat comparing to a year ago, but it has fallen since later last year. Indicator number 5. Choose your favorite. Ok, this is cheating, but no single indicator can tell the whole story of about $20 trillion United States economy. The measures that performs well in the past might not do so well in the future. So, it pays to keep an eye on various of data sources. The indicators mentioned in this video are among the most common input in the form of models that economists use to forecast recessions. But many economists have favorite indicators, or maybe a few or couple, that they also watch as a gut check. Temporarily staffing level. Temp workers are, by definition, flexible companies hire them when they need help quickly and get rid of them when demand dries up. That makes them a good measure of business sentiment. As of July, temp staff is near record high, but it has pretty much stopped growing. The quit rate. When workers are confident in the economy, they are more likely to quit voluntarily. The quit rate, a favorite indicator of John Yellen, a former Fed chairman, a bottom up shortly after the Great Recession ended and rose steadily until leaving off the middle of the year. Auto sales. After houses, cars are the most expensive thing that most families buying. And while owning a car is effectively required in a large part of the country, buying a new one almost never is. So, when your car sales are strong, it signals consumers are feeling good. Retail car sales haven't typically picked up before the recession, then drop sharply once one began. So, it isn't a great signal that sales are falling. We came to the end, let me know what do you guys think about current economic state, and if we are going into recession or not. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you are new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe for more animated videos about cryptocurrency and financial market. Other than that, thank you for watching and see you next video.